patched in and we ended up fixing a five foot long seam. I'm going to have to tell the homeowner this is going to be extra for fixing that seam. That wasn't part of the job. It had to be done. It could, we couldn't just patch that in. We had to fix that seam also because it was a crack water damage seam that went off. So we had to peel that off. So once I'm done with all my hanging stuff, always put your hanging tools away. If you don't need them anymore, get them out of your way. As for me, I use a bucket method. I also have a tool belt, but I pull out the tool belt when I'm really getting serious with the big project, hanging more than a couple of sheets of drywall, then I'll pull out the tool belt. But for these patch jobs, I keep everything I need, my basic tools, and a bucket. So grab bucket, I call it. Kick bucket, grab bucket. Now I'll need my coating tools. We use a pan and knife. I always use my go-to knife, 12 inch knife and a six inch knife. This is my bad six inch knife. This is my good six inch knife. So I always have one nice six inch knife I use for texturing and good mud coating. And I have a bad six inch knife for digging out old drywall and stuff like that. So this is my joint compound. And this one will be my that's my five. I keep my five minute mud in a bucket. How do I know which bucket it is? Well, I only use five minute muds for these repairs. I don't carry around five minute. I don't carry around 20, 40, 90, all those different ones. I just have for repair work, five minute mud because it's a good stuff. It's awesome. You'll see in my videos the type of product I use. Depending on your region, you might have one or the other. Only use hot muds if you know what you're doing. These set up like a cement. You're going to need water, a water bucket, and a sponge. I already have this ready to go from the last job. So let's go ahead and mix up some mud. I'm going to just mix up a pan. What I need in my pan, one pan of hot mud, and then we're going to go ahead and get this coated. Hot mud, I got a big pan here. I use an 18 inch pan. Most pans that you're going to get in the store are going to be 12 or 14 inch pans. So depending on how much mud you need, this one I'm going to need basically a full pan of mud, but I only do three-fourths of a pan of powder, and then you want to use fresh water. Dump it in, good full sponge load of water in, then we're going to mix it, toss and turn with a six-inch knife. Everybody has their own techniques on YouTube, how to mix hot muds. Some regions, they don't use pan and knives, they use a hawk and trowel. But over here in the West Coast, we're West Coast riders, we use pans and knives. I'm sorry, hawk and trowels. We'll let the hawk and trowel guys do stucco or plaster. Drywallers out here, we use pans and knives. It's easier to mix in. You're just tossing and turning, mixing it by hand. You don't have to mix a whole bucket load. You just need one pan at a time, because that's all you're going to put on. There's two guys here doing a bunch of patches. Maybe I'll mix a half a bucket or something, 20 minutes. Mix it up, mix it up. Get all your corners of your pan, get all that dry powder in there. Now it's mixed up, real heavy, heavy mixed up mud. Let's go ahead and get it coated. I'm going to use my 12 inch knife to get it coated. Do a nice first coat. All right, with the seam that I dug out, I'm just going to fill that in. Basically, we channeled it since we got rid of the old tape. Now we got a channel, so now it's really easy to mud. If you're working with hot muds, you're going to have to work quick. You want to be able to get the mud on and turn around and clean up your tools before the mud sets up. Move your ladder to the next position. out of the way. Remember how I said I want to press mud inside this gap? Go ahead and put mud on it, on your tape seam. Now follow through and push up hard. You're pushing that mud inside the grooves and the crevices. And the grooves and the crevices. Alright. Now we can turn around and coat. Coat it heavy. That's 
That's why I like to keep lids in my buckets. You'll get water droplets in there and get goobers in your bucket. That's all right. Your angle. ceiling side, creating a nice 90 degree angle, it does not have to be perfect, this is just a first coat. Your edges, feather your edges, your pack, feather your edges. You want to try to use up all the mud in your pan, get it on there before you trowel it down. Trowel it down, trowel it down. See how I'm moving my knife over to the next section? You're going to have black marks. This is a quick set mud, so I still got extra mud in here, so I'm going to take it out further over here to fade it in. So that's a good first coat. Let it dry. Clean up your tools. Next up, clean up your tools. Scrape your tools. Clean your tools right when you're done using it. This is already starting to even set up. It's starting to get hard. You could even dump it in a pile. Since it's hot mud, it's going to dry one hard rock. So I just sometimes pump it in an area that won't get in my way. You definitely don't want to dump it where you're stepping because you don't want to step in it and get it on your shoe. So get your pan cleaned up. You can hook up a hose and have a washout area with the hose. If not, just use your bucket and sponge. The lid, I don't have a lid on there. See a water droplet just fell in my hot mud? That'll create a clump later because now that droplet's going to harden up in five minutes. But clean your tools, take your time. You just don't want this hot mud setting up on your tools because if it sets up on your tools, it's not fun to get off. You're going to have to sand it, grind it, get it off because it's going to set up like a cement. These one or two patch jobs, it's perfect to use a five minute mud. You, just, you get the mud on, it gives you plenty of time to clean up. Get the pan cleaned up. Next step, everybody knows the next step with hot muds, we're going to have to slick it out. You're going to need a clean six inch knife and a damp clean sponge. We're going to wet the area, damp it up, and then we're going to slick it out. But let's go ahead and let this set up. It's a five minute mud, so it is going to take a few minutes to set up. So in the meantime, I can start cleaning up your work area, get everything cleaned up. Don't just sit around waiting for the mud to dry. Do your next step so you can hurry up and finish this job and get on with your life. All right, I think it's starting to set up. It's been a few minutes, so let's go ahead and check it. Just put your hand in it. It's damp, but it's touchable, so it's workable. So you're gonna have to slick it out now. Let's go ahead and slick out this hot mud. Slicking out. I have a video on my playlist. Most of my videos show me where to go hot mud. Slick it out with that damp sponge and work in the angle first. You want to catch this mud as it's setting up, not after it sets up. Hit your edges. You want to feather this edge, get rid of that mud edge. That's the most important thing in patches, is feathering that edge so you don't see a sharp line. I'm just going over it. Your clean six inch knife. Now we're just going through. I'm pushing down kind of hard. And that seam, it's pushing that mud in the seam. And it's also taking the extra mud off. Taking the extra mud off. If you do enough of this slicking out, your, your first coat slick out turns into a second coat. See that extra mud in there? I'm following it through. And it's almost turning into like a second coat over everything else I did. Hot 
hot muds are more advanced type material you're using. I use it like this because I want to finish these jobs in one trip, get them textured in one trip. If you're working on a project in your own home and you're not that comfortable with mudding, then use a joint compound. It's starting to set up. That's why you want to work it before it sets up too much because then it's not easy to work with. This stuff's setting up strong. It's the best stuff on the market. Nothing will crack after you use hot muds. Crawl through your angle, your edge. Anything that doesn't look right, just go over it. Your tape seam that we did. I'm going the opposite direction. Move my ladder and get the rest of this tape seam. It's about a five foot long tape seam. Mostly get rid of that edge. Get rid of that edge. This slicked out. This is a good first coat. It's almost like a second coat here. I can turn around and texture this, but I'm going to follow through with a tight coat. Either hot mud, I might even do a joint compound. Since I'm going to texture it with a red line joint compound, I can do a tight coat. A joint compound. A second coat. That's because my first coat's good. I could texture it as is because I put the mud on just right and I slicked it out just in time. To, there's extra mud on there. That's what I was taking off, extra mud. Sometimes you don't just keep putting mud on, caking it on, and make a heavy hump. You don't want to see the patch. You're just filling in the deep areas. Well, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to do a tight skim coat. I'm just going to make some hot mud, a tight skim coat of five minute mud again. And then we're going to let that five minutes set up and then we're going to go ahead and do a skip trial texture. So let's go ahead and mix a little bit of five minute in our pan. Do a se second coat. I won't need as much because all the fill work is done. So a quarter of a pan, if that mud. Add our water, mix it in. It's not going to be as thick as first coat. So you want to add a tad bit more water just to thin it down. We don't want soupy mud. We don't want mud dripping off the ceiling. But we're going to do a skim coat. If your patch is really deep, you're going to have to do a nice filth second coat. My patch is pretty nice. So I'm just going to skim coat it. This is just going to fill in any imperfections, waves, gouges. I might even skim coat it the opposite direction. But the mud's pretty thin. That way I can work with it. Nice and creamy mix up. You want it cream. You want no clumps in your mud. So let's go ahead and do a tight second coat on this with some five mud. Alright. Tight skim coat. You can go the opposite direction. Last go around I went this way. I'm going to put the mud on this way, but I'm going to trowel it down the opposite way. You don't have to do this, but what that's going to do is fill in any chatters, waves. Basically, a second coat's just a finished coat to go over anything. It just gets rid of any imperfections, all it is. Feather your edges. Feather your edges, go past your original first coat. Since I went that way, I'm going to go this way now. Go that way. Pulling scratches because it's a hot mud and there's boogers in my water. That's good. Take your leftover mud and hit your angle. They say you can't use fiberglass and angles. Well, I just did. And I guarantee you this is a stronger angle than any paper tape angle. Of course, new construction, you use paper. Everything looks good. Double check it. Now I just got to do my seam. Tight skin coat right over it. Move your ladder. Finish it off. Once it's coated, we're going to let this coat set up. 
And then we're going to go through and touch it up, slick it out, and then we're going to be ready for texture. Go past your first coat, make sure everything looks good, double check it, looks good. Let's let it set up, clean your tools. Scrape all the mud out of your pan. It's starting to already set up. Scrape your edges of your pan, whatever you need to do. Get it all cleaned up. Don't let this mud dry in your pan. Your knives, if they get mud gets caked on there, just use your six to scrape your coating knives. Vice versa, use your coating knives to scrape your six. Get that mud off there. You got all the bulk mud off there, go ahead and wipe everything down. Nice clean six inch knife. Keep these knives clean. These knives, if they stay clean, will last a long time. The only time you replace knives is if they get bent or if they break from rusting out. A nice clean knife will last a long time. Same with your pans. I don't know how long I've had this pan. It's an 18 inch pan. I can't even find an 18 inch pan. And if I do, you have to pay like 40 or $50 for such a big pan now. So you just keep these pans clean. They'll last forever. You actually drop it. They, they can handle a tumble, but the only thing that's gonna damage it if they get bent from getting stepped on or really damaged from falling as long as you keep them clean, there's over the years mud getting caked in there, but that's good. You can soak it. I can even spray WD-40 inside this and the oil and stuff will loosen up all that caked in mud that's in the corners. Hot mud. I'm done with hot muds. So go ahead and put that away. My next material I'm going to need is a joint compound. This is a joint compound I had from the other job. So this is ready to go. So I'm just basically going to scoop what I need in my pan so it's ready to go. I don't need much for this patch. Half a pan, if that. The good thing with joint compounds, whatever I don't use, I can put back in my bucket and use it another day and put a little bit of water and then put the lid on my bucket. But my pan's ready to go with texture. I'm just going to put that to the side. Our next step is just to get a sponge and let that set up and slick it out. So let's go ahead and slick it out. It should be setting up right now. All right, it should be setting up. You can always check it. Yeah, it's set up. Same thing like the first coat. Get rid of that edge. Most important, get rid of that edge. It fades it in. Maybe you're not too comfortable in doing the texture matching, but you can do up to this process and maybe just hire someone to texture. Or just leave it smooth. At least it's sealed up. Nice feathered out edge, so the texture will blend in nicely. I'll have a sharp mud edge there. You don't want to see that sharp mud edge when you go to paint. Move over your ladder to the next work spot. Same thing here, edge, edge, edge. Get your angle, get your angle. Get rid of that edge, edge. Same thing with the six, just follow through. You can also go the opposite direction of your coat. That's just filling it in. I'm taking off the extra mud as you can see. Sometimes more mud isn't good. That's a problem most people, they put too much mud on. You don't want a big two by two hump on your ceiling because you think you just put a big glob of mud on. Anyone can glob mud on a patch. It's putting the mud where it's needed. Kind of like I'm fixing a dent on a car. I don't just smear Bondo all over the fender. I put the Bondo inside the dent to fill in the dent. And I don't put the whole can of Bondo on there. I just put what's needed to fill in the area only. And if it needs more, then I'll do another tight coat. Extra mud taken off. It's pretty much set up now. So now I'm going to go get my pan of texture and we're going to do a skip trowel. Skip trowel with the joint compound. So let's go ahead and get this textured out. Most textures are done with joint compounds. This is a skip trowel, so it's done by hand with the knife. I like to use a nice straight six inch. A lot of guys like to use bigger knives, but that's good and dandy if you're doing big jobs like one, two, ten, twenty. 100 sheet jobs, but for these patch jobs, 
just use a six inch knife. We're just skipping the angle first, skipping the angle on the wall side. If you don't know how to skip trowel, maybe you can practice on a piece of scrap sheetrock. A good secret too is if you go on the outside edge where the old texture is, they'll help give you a pattern. Pattern. You also want to make sure you go the same direction. Same direction as existing. Nice and slow. Everybody asks me, how do I do skip trowel? Well, it's more of rinse and repeat thing. You learn by repetition. Any heavy spots like that? No problem. Just get rid of it. If you want a real heavy skip trowel, sometimes people do like a double skip, just double over it. But anything you do, you're going to have to trowel down, trowel down. Just texture out the whole area. This is a simple patch. I guarantee you if you own a house or a condo, you're going to have to do a two by two patch at least once in your home ownership life. Especially plumbing access, they like to open up ceilings. So this is a most common patch. I have a ton of videos on my channel just doing patchwork like this because it's so common. it a nice transition from old to new. Any missed areas, just double check everything. Textures out there, I would say we have spray knockdowns, we have spray splatters, we have hand textures like this, skip trials. Got brush textures. So many different textures. These skip trowels are common in these newer homes, houses that are less than 10, 20 years old. Most common textures. Track houses. Outside edge. Knock it down, knock it down. Knock it down. And I just have my angle over here. Joint. Turn into a large area. Your mud, once you're done with the mud, double check your work. I like to look at both sides, looks good.